Hi everyone. With over 40,000 kilometers on these grips, it's time for a new set. So today, we're going to choose a new set of grips, cut these old ones off, get the new ones mounted, and take the bike for a short ride to see how they feel. Today on Dino's Tinker Shed. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to change the grips on the DR650. Um, these are the original grips that were on the bike when, when it was sold and they are just about wore out and I'll show you some pictures of that here right now and you can kind of see that all of the, the grips are worn down especially in some of the places where your hands rub, uh, where you got the most weight and quite frankly the vibrations are just getting to be crazy and you, they're worn down and not only that they're starting to harden up quite a bit so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a new set of grips and I originally wanted to put on these and these are a set of uh, pro taper pillow top grips and why I wanted to use these is they are a clamp on style grip so they do not require um, anything other than an allen key let me see if i got the right one here i don't require anything other than an allen key to go in and you just basically tighten them onto the grip like that and bob's your uncle they stay super tight and these were what i originally wanted because they you don't use glue and and that's a great option where i ran into a roadblock was the throttle side so the throttle side um it actually replaces your throttle tube with a new throttle tube and with that it comes with an assortment of different cams for different motorcycles and different applications and I didn't find one that fit the DR650. Um, this is the closest I could come. I've modified it a little bit but what I'm finding is uh, the throttle will not return the way I want it to. The original one snaps right back. This one sort of slowly works its way back. And I just, I just can't have that. So in, as much as I wanted to use these pillow tops, and, and maybe I just bought the wrong style, I'm not sure, this particular set of grips doesn't seem to want to work well for me um, in my application. So what did I do? Well, I went back to Amazon and I looked for an anti-vibration grip and here is what I came up with. So these are URI grips um, with flange and these are made in the United States and they are really really nice looking grips. I've never used URI grips before. Um, brought to you by Lizard Skin. It's it. I don't even know I'm tell you what I think that sounds like. Um, but you can kind of see they're a big chunky soft rubber block grip um, and they are really sticky <laughs> inside they don't even to, to install them they actually suggest just air pressure um, blow a little bit of air through blow the grip up um, and that is one method to to do that the problem is I need to cut the ends of the grips out because of the bar end weights and ultimately uh, I'll, I'll probably have um, some brush guards put on there so blow gripping them on there, blowing them on with air isn't going to work for me. I'm going to have to cut the ends of the grips out and I'm going to, I've got a couple ideas. I know you can buy a tool for these that, that makes the job easy. You insert it and you hammer it and it'll punch a perfect hole out. I think I can do that with some hole punches that I currently have. And if not, I'm thinking I might be able to use copper tubing that fits down in there, sharpen the copper tubing and then maybe that'll work. Um, the other problem I might have with these is these grips are about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch longer than the factory Suzuki grips, which means I have to move the throttle and the, um, the switch gear on the clutch side in a little bit to make some real estate for these grips. And I'm really not sure if, if I have that kind of real estate on the factory bars. 
If not, I may have to cut the end off, which I really don't want to do because these have a great, great uh, rim on the outside that just feels, like just feels great. I can't tell you how nice these grips feel. Before we can take the grips off, we have to take off our bar end weights. Now what exactly do these things even do? I mean, they're just heavy chunks of metal. They're really designed to take some of the vibration out of the bars by adding some weight to the end of the bars. And I don't know if they really work or not, but mine come with them, so we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna take these off and put them back on. So the way these are held on is there's a little expansion nut in there, and you use a screwdriver. Use a quality screwdriver if you can to take these things off. Now I have mine off quite often. I usually take them off. Oh, oh man, there we go. I usually take them off once a year just to make sure that the threads aren't seized up. So you can kind of see I've got this loose and then what I like to do is you just back this out just a little bit more here and I give that a little bit of a hit. <clears throat> and what you're going to see is as I pull this out you should be able to see how this works. So the way this works is it has a nut on the end so you don't want to undo them completely or you'll lose that nut. And it basically sandwiches this, this soft rubber here. So as you tighten it up, want to take a look at what happens to this rubber here. You're going to kind of see that it starts to expand a bit. <clears throat> and it, it sort of fills that hole. So when I take these off, you'll actually see there's anti-seize on these. Um, and that, that's sort of something that you have, to, you have to take care of or they'll seize in there. If they seize in there, boy, they're hard to get out. All right, well, here we go. So what I'm going to do is take our razor knife here and I'm going to cut this grip right off. And you can see that it's a little bit sticky in there. <clears throat> try to cut down there without getting into that. I could have done this with the control lever off. What I'm really trying to do is not cut myself here. And it's always hard working around the camera. So here we are, just about, just about there. And you're gonna see, so if I look like I'm gonna cut myself, that's just because I'm trying to get around and, and have you sort of see what's going on here. So there's the grip. The grip is off, and you can kind of see what we're dealing with. And now we are going to clean that with a little bit of brake cleaner. So let me just grab that brake cleaner, and we'll be right back. And we're going to lay, lay a little bit of brake cleaner on that. And I am going to scrub that to get all the glue that I can off. And you can see there's even a little bit of of rust here and, and that's often when you have a open-ended grip like this it gets a little bit of water and a little bit of moisture in there and get the majority of that off so that it's clean you can sort of see how that is and then what we're gonna do we are gonna finish up with a little bit of fresh brake cleaner and yes I know I could be wearing gloves Right, so that the grip itself, the bar, is spotless. And that feels pretty good to me. We're gonna do the same thing here on the throttle side as we did on, on the clutch side. So let's see if we can get this out. Boy, they're tough to get out sometimes. And this is a little different because this is, of course, where the throttle tube is. But we are going to try and get this one off without damaging the throttle tube too much. It shouldn't be too hard, I don't think. Hmm. So we'll cut my guts open there. Got to be careful with these razor knives. This one is really glued on well. Wow, and 
one more time. Let's see if we can get to her. I think what I'm going to do here is try a little set of clamps on here. See if I can pull this one off. Oh, of course not. This one's going to be messy. Really messy. It does not want to come off of there. Wow. Might have to break out the heat gun. To sort of secure what I want to get it done. Let's try this. I'll try getting the grip off on this side and peeling it back. It's oftentimes the best way anyway. Okay. Let me see if I can get a grip on here with some pliers. There we go. And oh, of course not. This is what tinkering is about, is getting in trouble. All right, here we go. Okay. Hopefully I can get this all off of this throttle tube and you reuse the throttle tube. It's going to be interesting. I probably used contact cement or something stupid ass like that. All right, we're still working our way through. Holy cow. This is pretty nasty, but we're going to get it. Oh man, 40,000 kilometers of riding and who knows what is the problem with this throttle tube here, we might end up having to take the throttle tube off. Come on, you crazy thing, you. There we go. Oh, almost had it. I don't even know how the heck I'm going to get this off of here in one piece. Get a screwdriver underneath this here and get this off. Let's see here. It is like one piece unit here. <laughs> it is pretty bad. Now, well, we're gonna see what we can do because we are into it now. Wow. I am gonna be peeling this sucker down for a while. Let me, uh, let me take a little break here. I'll get this off onto the bench and see if I can't get this off. Um, and we'll come back to it. Okay. Th this is challenging to get the throttle tube out. You have to first remove the brake lever and the hand guard. And it's pretty simple. It has a bolt that runs through the top that holds the hand guard on. And then there's a nut that retains it. And what that does is it gives you access back here. To these two screws on the throttle housing and if I remember right these are different sizes I think there's a longer a longer bolt on the top as there is on the bottom but let me just see here see how that works yes so you can see one is slightly longer than the other so the longer bolt goes to the top of the throttle housing and then these just fall apart and you're left with the throttle tube so the way to get this off is you can rotate it and with a small screwdriver we can push the throttle cables out so there we have it. Here is the original throttle tube. I'm going to go put this on the bench and peel the rest of this grip off here. Oop, let me get into focus there. Try to get this in, try to get all the rest of this grip off without damaging the throttle housing. And um, come back, we'll put the grips back on. After what seemed like an eternity, I was able to peel off as much rubber as I could with a razor knife. And I decided to take the remaining rubber off at my bench grinder's wire wheel. It did a really good job of removing this material off of the throttle tube. And I still believe that this may have been a one piece unit that you buy right from Suzuki. Now in the end, I was able to get all of the remaining rubber and glue off the throttle tube and salvage it for reuse. But I'm going to tell you, this was not an easy job and it was extremely messy. Even though I had a dust mask and a face shield on, rubber bits were going everywhere. And by the end, I was covered in the stuff. So if you are going to choose to go down this route, and maybe there's a better one out there, um, be prepared to be a little bit dirty at the end of it. 
and installation of the throttle tube is basically the reverse of what we did originally so you can kind of see that if it's back in like this there we go and then these guys lock in around these tabs up here right in here see these two tabs these guys here are going to lock those in so let's see if we can do that one there we go beautiful again we put the long bolt on the top up here there we go it's always interesting when you start doing things on video to how it looks so this part this the long bolt there and then we put the smaller bolt on the bottom there we go and we just tighten those down so that they cinch there we go so that buttons that up like so other than putting on thing and see how that returns the other one wouldn't do that so it was important that i actually reuse this throttle tube um, or hopefully it's going to grab the new grips we're going to see in a minute okay so this is kind of what was left after the peeling there's a lot of grip here it just was gross and in the bench grinder just covered me with material um, I did have a dust mask on but man oh man I'm sure I've got got it in places I don't even want to know about so we're gonna get rid of this and <clears throat> what I want to do We'll put a fresh clean rag down here. I'll throw the white balance off. Here we go. And we are going to compare grip lengths. So let's get out. Here is the difference in grip length right there. You can see it. So I'm going to need to trim this down. And it's killing me because look at it. It's going to be right in the middle of one of those big blocks. I'm not sure what the best way to do this is. I'm kind of thinking it would be nice if I could roll the grip somehow to cut it. And then I'm thinking, well... I just don't know. I'm wondering if I can cut that with a vibrating tool. If I put a, a smooth cutting blade on it, maybe I can cut it with a vibrating tool. Let's try that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the vibrating tool out. Just give me one second here and we'll go get the tool. So where was that one? There we go. We'll try this guy here. I know that one will go on. It says Milwaukee right on it. Look at that. Oh, like a glove. This is this is real time here. Okay. And it's still going to be this issue of how do I mark this? So I'm kind of thinking, I know this sounds goofy. Let's see. I do have a gold marker here that I can kind of go. That one doesn't work. Let me see if I've got a different color. Well, I don't, but I do think I can go in like this with the black one and just come around here, get it as close as possible. I know you might not be able to see this, but I can see that. Now it's going to get a little bit noisy in here as I try this. Now I don't know if this is going to work or not. We're going to try it and see. I wish it was, I wish I didn't have to do that. That looks pretty good. 
Man, oh man, what a shame. Now it's a Dury grip. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try to put this on and see if it will stick. I'm gonna use hairspray on mine, so let's try that. But first, let's cut the other grip and we'll uh, make sure that it is uh, the right size. Not perfect, but better. That was a better, better thing. So let's try putting these on. We're gonna put them on with hairspray first. Hopefully that will work. If not, we'll glue them on with something better. Right on, I'll be right back. We're gonna try this with Salon Selective's All Day Volumizing Stay Put Extreme Hold Hairspray. And there's a reason I wanna use this. I used to work in a bicycle shop and this is all we ever used for our grips. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shake this up and I'm gonna spray the heck out of it inside there. And slider on. You get about 30 seconds to do this and straighten that up and we're gonna see if that is going to hold. They already look better, don't they? So there's a reason you use hairspray. It's designed to hold those fashionable hairdos in any sorts of wind. It basically just acts as a lubricant and as it dries up under there, the stickiness of the rubber sticks on. So we're gonna try it on the other side as well. That, that throttle tube over there worries me a little bit. I'm gonna try it and make sure we can get it done. Let's give it a shot. Now this one worries me a little bit. See that lip? I've got to be able to get this up and over that lip onto the throttle tube and centered. So you can only turn it, right? You, you can't pull back. You've got to turn it that way if you're going to rotate it. So we are going to try this. And I'm going to lube the living bejesus out of this to make sure that I can get it on there. There we go. It's going. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to try to line that URI up so that it, you can read it and it looks reasonably good. That looks pretty good. All right, now all we have to do is reinstall our bar end weights. And wait for the whole thing to dry. So you see, I could have had this a little longer here but I think it's okay, especially since I'm gonna put brush guards on this at some point. We'll let this harden up, we'll come back, and we'll see how it's doing. Wow, that took so much longer than I thought it would. I really struggled getting that rubber grip off of that throttle tube, and if it wasn't for my bench grinder and my wire wheel, I think I might still be working at it. I really don't know how I would have got it off of there without that tool. Now in the end, the grips look good and they feel great. They're solid, the hairspray's holding well, and I think the URI grips were the right choice to go with for the DR. But I would like to know why I wasn't able to get those uh, Pro Taper pillow top grips to work. The advantage of being able to have a clamp on grip sure would be nice. And I'm just thinking that maybe there isn't a cam profile that quite works well within the throttle block. So if anybody can tell me what's going on there, please leave a comment in the comment section below. For now, thanks for watching. I hope I helped you out. And I'll see you next time on Dino's Tinker Shed.